Hey fun fans, our featured FRC deep dive team is 1619 Upper Creek Robotics, and they've hooked us up with a sweet 1619 t-shirt. To enter, be a YouTube subscriber and let us know in the comments which 1619 video is your favorite. You can enter in any video that has this intro, so make sure you comment below. We'd also like to thank our sponsor of this show, Stryker. Discover why so many FIRST alumni and mentors are putting Stryker first when it comes to their internships and careers. Visit striker.com forward slash first to view career openings tailored to those in first. That's S-T-R-Y-K-E-R.com forward slash first. We're going to get started by uh, getting to know a little bit more about 1619. Uh, later on during the show, we'll be asking some questions that were submitted by you, the community, via our Discord, uh, Chief Delphi, social media, etc. And uh, we will also take some questions submitted live in the chat throughout the show. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask, uh, up a creek post it in the chat and tag first at first updates now and we'll try to get to as many of those as we have time for tonight so hey, Nick, then before we get started i do want to address something that was already brought up in the chat um 1619 is confirmed of visco team um i just wanted to make sure that we pointed that out i think that was uh i forget who posted that but confirmed we are visco girl team what what does that mean yeah i don't know what that means uh, you have to ask Chelsea. I had to ask her one day, but yes, we are a Visco girl team. Um, well, <laughs> um, well, Visco is an app. It, it's, it's kind of an outdated meme now, um, but it's kind of like the new Valley girl, uh, like stereotypical white girl kind of thing. Um, so you'll see people talking about like scrunchies and and I oop, um, and that's like Visco girl personalities. But. Yeah. You just, I think you just described the killer bees, too. Um, good <laughs> yeah. to know. All right. Uh, all right. So we're going to get started out with some basics. Uh, so why don't you guys talk about how your team is organized as far as your, uh, your personnel, your roles, and how different aspects of the team are covered. So we're a team with about 90 students on our FRC team, but we have a full pathway through FIRST. So we have about um, 150 students across all four of our programs, and we have 25 mentors across those programs, too. Um, we're community-based, so we have students from nine different uh, schools across the district, um, and we also have some students who are homeschooled, GC is homeschooled. Yep. And our team is also open to anyone in the community to join, so there is no actual like application process for people to go through for any of our programs. Um, so we're really proud that we can keep that open to anyone that wants to join. Um, one thing that's really different about our team is that we're actually under a nonprofit organization called the Gear Alliance. Um, we formed that when we got our new building um, in 2015, and it's really allowed us to have more space to grow our programs and offer more STEM in the community. And we, we have our full pathway first from junior FLO, FLO, FTC, and FRC. Um, so the Gear Alliance is basically the head of all of our programs, but under FRC, we have a separate leadership structure, which Tyler had shown before. Um, and with our leadership structure, it's put a, a major focus on student leadership and it's been reflected through that. Um, we have our board of directors made up of three students, the director of operations, director of engineering, and director of communications, and one mentor. And we're responsible for managing and leading the overall team. And we also support our other um, junior FLO, FLO, and FTC programs with whatever resources they need. Um, and our uh, FRC students mentor our younger programs as well. And underneath the board are the leads and their sub teams. And we have eight sub teams, engagement, outreach, strategy, construction, controls, hardware, software, and fabrication. And we also have one safety officer. Um, so each team has a student lead responsible for training their sub team members and completing jobs within the sub team. And we just really like the structure that we put together. Sounds incredibly organized um so so moving on to um kind of funding for the team how do you guys approach funding for your team is it mainly sponsorship or is it fundraising or some of both and how do you guys go about approaching that every year the majority of our funding really comes from um sponsorships from local businesses in the community um so we have a lot of big sponsors like the school district Ball Aerospace, Boeing, Seagate, and we have about 15 other sponsors within that as well. Um, our facility is also donated, um, and we are extremely thankful for that. It's been great. 
has allowed us to really grow our team. We used to be about like a 20 person team on FRC and we've grown to four different programs with 150 students. Um, so that's a really big accomplishment of ours and the building has really allowed us to grow from that. Um, and the building has also really allowed us to have more community outreach programs and just really change the direction of our team. So, like I said, the most of our sponsors are from businesses in the community that are recruited from um, our mentors and parents employers. Um, and, but we always try to recruit new sponsors um, to sustain our team. We have a sponsorship packet that we use to encourage local companies to sponsor the team, which has really helped our parents and mentors get their employees to donate and have other businesses donate as well. We are extremely thankful for all of our sponsors um, and everything that we do. We really try to reciprocate that as well. Um, so with Seagate, every Halloween, we hand out candy to play games in, um, with little kids there. And we also partner with the St. Green Valley School District. Um, and we do a computer science education day there, which is super fun. And we also provide programming curriculum for schools in the district, and we've reached about 1,000 students through that. And we also work with Ball on bringing a um, robot to demo at their Take Your Child to Work Day. And these partnerships have just really been great um, to support our sponsors as they support us. Um, and I think that's a really big part of maintaining those sponsors and also getting sponsors to our team. Um, yeah. Awesome. We're happy to talk about a new sponsor of fun uh, that I've been a fan of in Michigan for a while. We've been around them a bunch. So Tyler, why don't you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, I can't wait to talk about a course of your part of the couple thousand people that are in our Discord now. You should know uh, that we are beyond excited uh, to bring uh, on onto fun as fun is starting to grow and to help us accomplish our mission. Uh, producing content that is loud, live, and independent. Our friends at Stryker have stepped up to the plate, and, well, guess what? Stryker wants first alumni and mentors who are ready for a career with a cutting-edge medical technology company who have a passion to enable and save lives. Uh, get this. Not only does Stryker pay top dollar for careers. I'm still waiting for my call, by the way. Uh, they also pay great on internships and co-ops, but Stryker recognizes the power of first mentors and volunteers and will actively support you in first. Now, I don't know about the, the few of you that are lucky, those who are have jobs right now, but really how many of you can say that your employer actively understands what you do in first? Because as much as I love where I work, uh, it, they don't truly right now. Trying to explain what we do and what fun is, uh, that's a hard thing to get. And Stryker really does understand that. So give Stryker a thought and check out uh, what they have in store. Go to stryker.com uh, to find out more about Stryker uh, and see if there's a high paying first supporting career internship or co-op for you that's s-t-r-y-k-e-r dot com uh and thanks to striker by the way uh for helping uh keep fun a lot of live and independent uh guys you guys have been awesome stepping up with uh, donations and bits uh, and we're looking at getting to the next level we want to create more and more content for you and can't wait to do so so thanks a lot to striker for stepping up and helping uh let us do things like you know go to more competitions uh actually take a salary for once things like that would be nice and appreciated so thank you striker go check them out s-t-r-y-k-e-r dot com uh, and then moving on to kind of how your team works internally. Uh, how does your team handle training and educating your students every year, and especially the newer students you get every year on the team? So we generally um, use a fairly project-based training curriculum, but it varies a lot by sub-team. Um, our fabrication team is extremely organized, and they have a full training and certification process that every student goes through learning um, how to make certain parts on each machine. Um, and then the hardware sub team has been mostly focusing on SolidWorks tutorials, um, teaching students about uh, design considerations and going through previous games and looking at uh, some of the me common mechanisms in those. Um, Strategy has been practicing making uh, scouting apps using some, an app they're building to scout the game Connect 4. Um, they're also working on our 2020 pit scouting website right now. Um, and they train their scouts by watching um, matches from previous events and then uh, scouting them as a group. Controls has been doing uh, lots of projects, building up old robots um, and other fun projects like the self-balancing robots there at KS on the screen. Um, and then for software, this year we're teaming up with Controls and doing what we're calling a mock build season. So basically we're splitting up all of the rookies into, uh, I think we have four teams, 
um, and then they are each uh, competing in a basic game using um, some chassis from 2017. Um, and then we focus on a lot of off-season projects for training of students who have a little bit more experience. Hey, I just want to jump back in. Can you go more into this uh, sumo wrestling uh, robot that you guys came up with? How did you guys come up <laughs> yeah, with this idea? Really this is cool. awesome. Yes. So that the control team is building these self-balancing robots, um, and then they are actually able to drive them. So you can't see it in the video, but there are two students driving them, um, and they're slightly challenging to drive, but then uh, they sh most of the time they can recover from crashing into each other, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's a, a project I think they started last year, um, and I think they can control them with a phone application yeah. that they wrote. Uh, it's just, it was a, I think a fun way to get all of our new control students engaged in um, wiring, working with, I think they're using Versa Planetaries to drive the wheels. Um, they put some Raspberry Pis on, I think, so, yeah. to do the uh, controls. None of us are actually on the control <laughs> team, um, and, but they do. They did do a, a really cool project, and um, it looks like a lot of fun. Super cool, yeah. And it looks like it's mostly FRC components too, which is really cool. Right, um, right. So, so then moving on to during the actual competition season, um, what kind of things do you guys do both during the season and also in the off season uh, to help other teams in your area as well as just the community overall? And, and how does it help improve your own team and students in the process? All right, well, I can start with the first part of that question. So um, as far as helping other FRC teams in the area, we have what we call uh, our team support techs at competition to a team of students who go around helping other teams with anything they need. Um, at any event we go to and then we also open up our shop and practice field for student or for teams going to the houston championships um and so we have a bunch of colorado teams come up and practice on our field um and then we run as Chelsea mentioned earlier we have a pathway through first so we run teams um, from junior fll all the way up we have I believe, five fll teams this year um and so we also run a um, FLL tournament. We started that last year, our qualif qualifier, um, and we send volunteers to quite a few other FLL events. Take the rest of that question. Yeah, so we have a lot of other ways that we help support our community that are outside of FIRST. And one of our biggest programs that we've recently incorporated over the last two years is our Girl Scout badge program. Um, basically, Girl Scouts come to our building to learn STEM skills like robotics and cybersecurity. And in the past two years, we've brought in about 300 Girl Scouts, and we're really continuing to expand that program. Um, and we're really proud of that program that we've brought in. Um, we've reached a lot of girls in northern Colorado and central Colorado. Um, so we're excited to continue growing that program. Also, our team has developed a really strong partnership with UC Health which is a hospital organization in Colorado. And we donated 18 lily pads, which are these like ivy pole stands. Um, we drew a lot of inspiration from team um, 2468 um, to make these stands. And we also created 3D printed models of the Longs Peak Hospital for their donors. Um, another really unique um, community opportunity that we've had is incorporating the Where's Kindness Project um, we paint these washers and hand them out to people at competitions who have shown kindness and they can pass their kindness washer um, onto a person that they see is being kind. It's, it's really similar to Where's George, which is like where people track dollar bills and where they have gone. Um, so it's basically like tracking kindness in the community, especially in FIRST. Um, but we're actually looking for teams to get um, the Where's Kindness project in their state. So if you're interested, please reach out to us. Um, we also have a lot of international experiences that we've provided for our students, and it's been a really great way to have that cultural experience. Um, we've sent um, these STEAM camps um, in a box. It's one of the camps that we developed with our summer camp curriculum um, to countries like Japan, um, and I think we also sent it to Peru, too. And we've also worked with a FRC team in Bolivia. We sent them a drivetrain. We also coached them through um, kind of like the first process and how we go through our build process. Yeah, and uh, kind of adding on to that, how, you know, from a mentor perspective, how I think these community outreach projects help our students, um, they really bring on in a lot of opportunities for some of our students who normally don't get leadership opportunities to take a leadership role. 
Um, and that, you know, builds a lot of confidence in our students. And I think both of these guys have, you know, taken on leadership roles in community involvement projects. Yeah. Um, and that's really helped them grow as a leader within the first team. So by reaching outside, we're able to strengthen ourselves within as well. Um, I'll just go on the record. I've never been given a kindness washer. Um, <laughs> I guess I've never been seen as kind enough. So uh, sounds, sounds like you got some work to do. Uh. I do. I do. That's a, that's a huge self-improvement task I have this year is to be a little bit nicer. <laughs> J- JC and right. Kelsey, I just want to ask you, what is, what's one thing Clint has to do to earn the uh, kindness washer? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> um, maybe not give us as many push-ups in driver practice. Yeah, that's probably the <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.